Once there was a place in the woods where they sent people who didn't fit into the real world. Welcome, Jacob. Species identity disorder can be cured so that a person who thinks themselves an animal can resume a happy, healthy, and rewarding life. I want to do it. It's the best thing for everyone. You're all gonna end up wonderful human beings. They say the wolf and the wildcat are natural enemies. But they're wrong. It's hard not to laugh mm. at this film, but also be terrified and intrigued <laughs> and scared. Mm. And to know that this is a real condition, you mm. know, and people are going through this and then having to deal with that from an acting perspective. How do you approach a role like this when, you know, there, there is laughable moments in this movie. Yeah. There's serious stuff. Mm. How do you deal with all of that when you just see it on a page and know that you can pull this off? Yeah, I think, I think you've just got to be kind of true to what your character's going through and kind of that is the, the clearest way to if you can just be a cog in the big machine that's the story you don't have to kind of, you'd get lost in like well am i is it bad if i make it funny here unintentionally or is it bad if i make it too serious i think if you're just true to what your character's feeling in that moment that will and of course because that's that's written so beautifully by natalie that journey's kind of done for you so i think that's the sort of the best way to to kind of to get through all of those hurdles, um, but also in terms of the character as well, as you say, this is a, this is a real condition. But for the character Jacob that I play, I don't feel that he feels he has that. I yeah. think he just feels that he's a wolf, and so that's why I kind of actually didn't worry too much about, or not worry, but didn't explore deeply the condition because I thought if truly you have that, you'd just identify as the animal. So I just went down the animal route. And physically, then, how does one prepare for that? Like, when, you know, I guess you've played a lot of roles and you can look at a person and go, or historically or fictitiously or whatever, but when it's an animal, you mm. say you had to believe you're a wolf for this. Like, yeah. How do you do that? I think, I think because it's really, I think because they, I've, I have a real sort of fascination as to, like, what it would be like to be an animal. Not just a, not just a wolf, but I guess maybe... I can get quite heady sometimes and maybe it's a patronising patronizing to animals interpretation that they don't get as heady as humans. But there's something I think there's trying to root yourself in just instincts. Like how do I really feel about a situation in a kind of guttural sense, like your gut instinct yeah. on something. And if you lived by your gut completely, in a completely unsocialised way, what would that, what would you do? How would you be? I think that's kind of what drew me to the role in a sense. And then on top of the, the physical side of things is just like an added bonus as to like a kind of exciting, tangible transformation. But I guess it's sort of a, in some sense, is an exploration of what it would be like to genuinely just live off your gut instinct all the time and not, not in any sort of disingenuous way, but not care what anyone thought ever. Just kind of do what felt right to you and your, and your gut and your heart always. I'm putting you out of your misery. We call him the zookeeper. Keep clear of him. Ever think of running away? Only one person ever did. I've always had this feeling, these instincts. Stop. You're gonna get us caught. I can't. It's a cruel, cruel world. And working together again, um, when did you work that part out of this process? Did you kind of know going into audition stage or was it a nice surprise? Yeah, well, the, the kind of process of uh, the audition process was kind of different mm -hmm. um, uh, for both of us in that I auditioned and, and Lola just got offered the part. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, oh, but uh, but um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I knew that I was doing it in November of 2019 and then uh, and then you found it pretty soon after that. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, and then we went into lockdown and, and we were isolating together and um, okay. and we were doing press for a film that uh, we had shot together and we were doing that during lockdown and then we got out of one lockdown uh, or <laughs> one isolation another. and went into the yeah went into the other uh, for the for the film so uh, yeah it was it was amazing yeah it was incredible I mean it's it's not very often you get to work with your best friend once never mind twice so we felt incredibly lucky and where was this filmed because it's such a great dark and mysterious location, which makes the film even more dark and mysterious and yeah. scary. Uh, where was it? It was um, in uh, Hoth. Uh, so uh, 
not a particularly dark and mysterious, <laughs> uh, very no. beautiful place. But um, um, yeah, it was in a hotel. Well, what's the, the Deer hotel? Park Hotel? The, okay. the Deer Park mm-hmm. Hotel. Yeah. So, um, but uh, the, the, the grounds and everything there are incredible. But mm. the production designer Joe um, just completely transformed that place, and and yeah. he is so talented. He's a fornifter for this, um, which I think is totally deserved. It was incredible. I I think we all walked into each room and every time we were blown away by what he'd managed to do. Once upon a time, there was a wolf and a wild cat. I wanted to live happily ever after. It's not just about surviving, but surviving is me. Do you really think you can have a life with that boy? But life is no fairy tale, is it? You're pretty much an Irishman now, having made this film here, and you've worked with Saoirse and things like that. Yeah. Like, uh, was it a, a good experience working in Ireland again? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was. It's like I've I've been, I've been here a few times. Main, yeah, mainly around Dublin, and it's. Um, I always have a very good time here. So it was. It was wonderful to be part of a predominantly Irish team, and to do it here. We filmed it just. Um, just, just beyond Sutton Cross, um, so yeah, I've, I'd be, be honoured to be in any way considered, sort of, you know, allowed to be a little bit Irish. Are you allowed to say what you're working on next or what's on the plans? Yeah, I'm. Uh, the the last things I've I've just just finished was um, a TV. I've just been working with Shane Meadows in a TV series called The Gallows Pole, okay. and I uh, just finished uh, a film last summer called I Came By by a director, Baba Kanvari, who did a film Under the Shadows. So those are the next things to come out, and yeah, then otherwise I'll just see what's next. And are you sick or honoured to be associated with rumours of James Bond? Oh, I'll, I'll take it. You know, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it with a big pinch of salt, but I'll, I'll take it. Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for Wolf, George. Nice yeah. to meet you. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you. So I'm saying my goodbye. I'm running. I'm running. I'm breathing. I'm breathing. Do you want things to get worse for you? I have no human form. I have no human form.